It was another moment for the history books at one of the most historic addresses in Great Britain, 10 Downing Street. Its current resident, Prime Minister David Cameron, opened the gates for a street party to celebrate the royal wedding. The building, with its famous black door, has been home to 52 prime ministers since 1735. Well, let's go inside, Yeah, Joe, come into we? my, uh, yeah. Hopefully <laughs> the, door, the door opens. Once the door didn't open and I just was left outside, gently knocking, saying, please let me in. So, uh, you've lived here for almost a year. How are you liking it? It's, to start with, it is odd because it's a bit like living in a museum. But and, you uh, pretty much live and work at the yeah, same place. My commute from my bedroom to my office is about 30 seconds, so that's quite nice. At 44, David Cameron is the youngest prime minister in nearly 200 years. Since his election last May, he's lived in this museum of British history with his wife, Samantha, and their three young children. Do you spend a lot of time saying, don't touch that? No, basically what happens is they rush into that little door there, which is where all the security cameras are, and, and they get in there and they fiddle them all around and change all the alarm settings and calls. Oh, really? Chaos. And then they race down this corridor. Uh, they're normally little mint sweets on the cabinet table, and they work that one out. So when they come back from school, sometimes they rush in there and stuff their pockets full and then race upstairs. So this is where we sit. Long oh, before so Cameron was born. Hostilities will end officially. Sir Winston Churchill announced, The German war is therefore at an end. Good morning. Good morning. And Margaret Thatcher, the first and only female prime minister, met President Ronald Reagan. These were, these candlesticks were presents from uh, Ronald Reagan to Margaret Thatcher. So there we are, there's a little bit of America here. This was Churchill's favorite armchair. Which actually... And there's a little bit of Churchill everywhere. Do you ever sit in this chair? I, I don't. I'm so worried I might break it or something like that. <laughs> um, and I understand there are marks in here because he used to dig his fingernails into the arms to sort of when he was nervous. I didn't know that. I, I wouldn't be. There's a famous, the dispatch box in the House of Lords where he used to make some of the speeches during the war. You can see the mark where he banged his hand on it with his, his signet ring and you can see the chips in the wood. So these are Prime Ministers all the way up. The walls along the main yeah. staircase of 10 Downing contain the portraits of every Prime Minister but one. Cameron's won't be there until he's left office. That's the rule. There's Margaret Thatcher, then Blair and Major Blair and Brown. Brown's literally has just appeared, so this is uh, the latest. Since taking Gordon Brown's place, David Cameron has encountered the history, but also the enormous responsibility of the office he holds. His government instituted massive spending cuts to deal with a $260 billion deficit. The slashes in welfare programs and loss of government jobs led to protests in the streets of London. Already at war in Afghanistan, 10,000 strong alongside their American allies, the British military is now heavily involved in Libya. We took as a government some quite brave and difficult steps. I think the country understands that. But I think the country would have taken a pretty dim view if we had said, well, there's a massacre going to take place in Libya. A massacre we could prevent, but, you know, we're just not going to do this. We're going to leave that to someone else. That's not the sort of country that I think Britain ought to be, and it's not the sort of country we are. Another resident of 10 Downing Street, writing his own chapter yes, of British of and world history.